Disney is notorious for slipping subliminal messages into their movies and basing their movies on very adult themes. Oh, that's my favorite part! Especially movies involving the princesses. Maybe you've seen them for yourself, and maybe for the first time, you will. Please like, comment, and click that subscribe button below. Also, be sure to join our notification squad to catch similar content every day. And before we get the show on the road, can you guess this movie based on the emojis? Find out the answer shortly following the video. More of this jiggity pie. That's right, let's see ya. Shots it! Merida Brave. Brave, released in 2013, features a headstrong Scottish princess with fiery red hair by the name of Merida. The movie paved the way for Pixar's first female lead role and their first official princess. Merida is an exceptional archer and enjoys the simple things in life, riding her horse, Angus, climbing waterfalls, and shooting her bow. Not generally the norm for how we perceive princesses to be. Monotonous old traditions are not part of this lassie's fate, but our hero is faced with a challenge. Merida wishes to change her fate by acquiring a spell from a witch in the form of a cake. She feeds this to her mother, who ends up turning into a bear. Her brothers steal part of the cake, and they turn into bear cubs. Later on in the movie, Merida's brothers must retrieve a key which the maid just so happened to put in her cleavage. The key will open a room which Merida was locked in by her father and needs to escape. The boy cubs end up chasing down the housemaid and while one of them dives in to retrieve it, the other two looking on have different reactions. One of them is horrified and can't watch, and the other stares in amazement wishing it was him. Stop! Get out! Belle, the Beauty and the Beast. Belle seems to be one of the most iconic Disney princesses, and for good reason. She's smart, well-read, independent, adventurous, and open-minded. A type of person most fathers would want their daughters to grow into. So, we all know Belle is a little bit of a bookworm, to say the least. But what is she reading in the beginning of the movie? From the pictures shown while she is sitting by the fountain seems to be out of a fairy tale. She may possibly be reading a story very similar to how her life is going to play out very shortly. The possible reason Belle went to the west wing of the house, even though she knew it was forbidden, was because of the book she was reading. She may have known the castle was enchanted, and where someone tells you not to look is probably the best place, too. Belle just doesn't care to listen to people, especially if they tell her what to do. But if she hadn't disobeyed the beast's orders, she never would have found the way to break the curse. We have to give credit to Belle's adventurous and curious spirit. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs Cocaine Addiction Disney doesn't only have sexual subliminal messages in their films, but also drug references. There are magical mushrooms and the smoking caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland to Peter Pan enjoying a peace pipe with the Native American tribe. It also seems like Pinocchio may have been smoking more than just a cigar when he is shooting pool with Lampic. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs may have references of its own. To most, Snow White is a story of a lonely princess who has an evil stepmother who is trying to kill her. When she flees into the woods, she is led to a cottage and eventually befriends Seven Dwarfs. To others who delve deeper into the story tend to say otherwise. Supposedly, the movie itself is a symbolic representation of the seven stages of cocaine addiction. Each of the seven dwarfs' names correspond to the seven stages of addiction, all leading to a trip to the dock, while Snow White is a nickname for the drug itself. Now, while none of this can be proven and how people react to the drug differs, it is a fun theory to ponder over. Disney movies have been speculated to be heavily influenced by recreational drug use, but we will never know for sure. Sleeping Beauty, based on a story about rape. If you didn't know, Disney Sleeping Beauty is based on an Italian literary fairy tale translated to Sun, Moon, and Talia. The story is about a lord's daughter, Talia, who asks a woman spinning flax on a spindle if she can try it herself. She does, and as soon as she begins to spin, a splinter of flax is wedged underneath her fingernail. She instantly falls down, appearing dead. Talia's father decides to place her in one of his country estates. A short while later, a king is hunting in the woods and comes across the house because his falcon flies inside. When his falcon does not come back when called, he enters the house. He finds Talia and is stricken by her beauty but unable to waken her, thinking she is only asleep but she does not wake no matter how loud he yells. 
After this, he essentially makes love to her while sleeping and then leaves to his own city. While he was away, Talia gave birth while sleeping to twins. One of them, mistaking her finger as a nipple, begins to suck on it, thus removing the splinter and waking her up. After seeing them, she named them Sun and Moon. This is quite the story to base a movie made for children off of. I'm really looking forward to this performance, Sebastian. Phallus Palace, The Little Mermaid. Yes, believe it or not, The Little Mermaid is featured in here twice, both times for phallic references. Ariel, one of the original five Disney princesses, seems to have a pretty great life, but her home may be a little out of the ordinary. If you own an original copy of the VHS movie, look closely at the cover and you can see one of the spires of the palace appears to be shaped like a giant phallic object. That's right, friends, Ariel lives in a phallus palace. It may be slightly obscured by the shiny golden sparkles, but it's still there, hidden in plain sight in all its glory. Rumor has it the phallic object was deliberately drawn by a disgruntled artist who was upset he would be laid off at the end of the project. However, the truth finally came out and the resemblance between the castle spire and a phallic object were purely accidental. The cover was drawn by an artist that did not work for Disney, making him neither upset or about to be let go. The artist did not even know what he had done until a member of his church heard about the controversy on the radio and called him with the news. Gotcha. Sex Hair Entangled Who didn't immediately fall in love with Rapunzel? Tangled, released in 2010, spent six years in the making at a cost of roughly $260 million, which, if correct, would make it the most expensive animated film ever made and the fifth most expensive film of all time. It is loosely based on the German fairy tale Rapunzel in the collection of folk tales by the Brothers Grimm. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down that gorgeous sex hair. <laughs> all right, let us explain. It has been a long-standing controversy about the word sex being written with Rapunzel's hair on the cover of the movie. Did you see it? People swear is really there and parents everywhere were concerned. It is similar to the argument that the cloud of dust Simba produced in The Lion King spelt the same word. Given Disney's track record of hiding subliminal messages, at times it seems people are going out of their way to find them. It does seem a little far-fetched animators would go through all the trouble of putting the word sex on the cover. However, crazier things have happened. Speaking of crazy, did you know that Rapunzel's 70 feet of hair would actually weigh somewhere around 60 pounds in real life? Yikes, that would be a lot of weight to drag around every day. Some all-powerful genie can't even bring people back from the dead. The genie's gay joke in Aladdin. Aladdin, released in 1992, was based on the folktale Aladdin and the Magic Lamp from 1001 Nights. When you have a comedian like Robin Williams voicing one of the main characters of the movie, you can bet there are going to be jokes intended for a mature audience. Let's be honest, it's pretty much guaranteed most of the jokes and references made by the genie went over the children's heads, but had the adults cracking up. Disney definitely used this to their advantage and did just that. Now, while it is not the classiest of jokes, it is meant to be in good fun. Following the genie saving Aladdin's life for the second time, he explains he was becoming quite fond of him. He then added, Not that I want to pick out curtains or anything. Whoa there! If things didn't work out with Princess Jasmine, it sounds like Genie wanted to go with Prince Ali of Ababwa. The blue guy with no shirt, a ponytail, and lives in a lamp filled with satin has some explaining to do. Of course, it would be extremely lonely to be trapped in a bottle for that many years. Pocahontas, not likely a love story. If there are any history buffs out there watching, then you know Disney's Pocahontas is based on real life. If you aren't one, then surprise, now you know. The real Pocahontas is speculated to have been born in 1595 to a Powhatan chief and given the name Matawaka. Pocahontas was actually a derogatory nickname meaning spoiled child or naughty one. John Smith, an English explorer and soldier who Pocahontas falls in love with, arrived in the New World in 1607 with other settlers. One day whilst exploring, he was captured by one of the Powhatan's hunting parties. The next accounts vary from source to source. In Smith's original writings, he told of having a large feast with the tribe and afterwards spoke with Chief Powhatan. In a letter he wrote to Queen Anne, he describes Pocahontas protecting him from an execution from the chief. This is similar to the scene Disney used, except Disney depicts her as a young woman. If you did the math, you would realize at this point in time she was closer to 12 years old. It is highly unlikely there was any romance between them, considering John Smith was around 28 at the time. <laughs> the 
Little Mermaid, the minister's sports and erection. Oh, to be young, in love, and about to be married. There are far better ways to start a wedding ceremony, but in The Little Mermaid's first wedding scene between the disguised Ursula and Prince Eric, there seems to be something off about the minister. In the side profile view, there is a slight bulge that moves in his nether regions, which leads us to believe the sight of those two lovebirds got that old man happy downstairs. While in this view it is claimed to be an erection, it is actually his knee sticking out from underneath the tunic. It just seems odd with the way the bulge moved. Are you trying to be sly, Disney? With the way his legs are shaped, the blending of his garb, and how it is framed, it is hard to distinguish in this frame but clearly visible in others. But still, in another view where you can see his legs, there is a gap between them and the wooden floor beneath him makes it look like his Johnson is hanging out, getting some fresh air. There's nothing like reciting your wedding vows and having your minister pitching a tent right in front of you. Anna, Frozen. Inspired by Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale, The Snow Queen, Frozen blew everyone away when it was released in 2013. It grossed over $1.3 billion worldwide and is ranked the highest grossing animated film of all time. People of all ages enjoyed the movie and the soundtrack was one of the defining characteristics in making it an immense success as well. People everywhere couldn't help but sing the film's iconic song, Let It Go. Now, while Anna technically isn't on the Disney princess list, we couldn't keep her off of this one. There's one scene in particular only some will understand. Like all Disney movies, most of the dialogue and humor is family friendly, but the writers are always considering the older audience as well, which is nice. There is one conversation in particular between Anna and Kristoff, which is sure to make the adults chuckle. They are riding in the sleigh and he is berating her with questions about Prince Hans she is so amazed with. He starts off asking generic questions about him, then throws in Foot size? Foot size doesn't matter. Subtle, but very clever. With Frozen being such a success, we can only hope for another movie to come out that tops it or is just as worthy. Perhaps there will be some more subliminal messages hidden for us to discover. What do you think of these secrets? Did you already know of some? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more great videos like this one. Before we forget, here is the answer for the emoji quiz before. Did you get it? Let us know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for new releases every day and check out our playlist.